Unfortunately, memorizing content is an essential skill that is required for any school or education system that you look at these days. And for so many of our subjects, whether it's in school or in college even, we as students depend on having to memorize things just to pass our exams. So in today's video, I'll be going through the two very effective methods that I've used to memorize content quickly for both my essay-based exams and for my practical problem-based exams as well. Let's get straight into it. This basically involves any humanities subjects, whether it's econ, business, law, history. You can also apply it to your literature essays, and I even used it for my biology long answer questions as well. The thing with these essay exams was that I found it so hard to learn a ton of content at home and then just come to class and spew out this perfectly structured essay in timed conditions. So to prepare for them, I did two simple things. One, I created good quality, digestible essay plans for every question that the examiner could possibly throw at me. And two, I drilled these essays into my head. And that's all there is to it. You produce 15 to 20 good essay plans, and then you memorize them efficiently a few weeks or days before the exams. But to produce these good quality essay plans, you need to find good questions to make them on. And the best way to do this is to go through old past papers and find old essay questions and then make essay plans based on those questions. I did this for my literature exams in the IB. I went through all the past essay questions, I listed them out and made sure that list was exhaustive enough to cover all the topics in different books that I had to study for those exams. And after going through enough of these past paper questions, you'll be able to look at the syllabus, put yourself in the examiner's shoes and then create your own questions as well. But yeah, that's the first step. Make a list of questions based on the past paper so that you can use that list of questions and make essay plans for them at a later point. The mark scheme is a special gift. Don't waste it. If you have a mark scheme or a criteria given to you for these past paper questions that you've looked at, then you need to take advantage of them. Before making the essay plan, make sure that you're reading and understanding the question's marking scheme. You need to use the specific phrases given to you in the mark scheme because that is what the examiner will be grading you on. How well you meet those criteria or how well you check those points off. Simply reading the mark schemes and understanding them before you make the essay plan will help you really understand the structure and the details that the examiner wants you to include in your essays. This is where you stop if you're doing subjects like biology. Instead of going on and creating essay plans or copying the textbook to answer the essay questions in your exams, what you should ideally be doing is studying directly from the mark schemes. Hear me out. The mark schemes of all of these bio exams, especially in A-levels and IB, they'll give you the specific content or the specific bullet points that you need to score full marks for that essay question. For example, in a six mark question on neurons, there's literally eight to 10 points in that mark scheme. And if you fulfill six of those points, if you tick them off in your answers, then you get full marks. So why waste time creating new answers for the biology long answer questions? As long as you understand the concepts, just study and memorize directly from the mark scheme itself. The way I did this for my IB biology exams was that I created this active recall Google spreadsheet that included long answer questions from the last 10 years of past papers. So I had all the past paper questions on one side, organized by topic, and then their corresponding mark scheme answers on the other side. I'd cover up the answers to the questions and then actively recall whatever I could remember from those mark schemes themselves. It was crazy how well this actually worked. I wrote an article about this very spreadsheet and how I used it for my exams. I am planning to get into all the details of how I use this in a separate video because I know how useful it is. But basically for these long answer questions, you should be directly memorizing from the mark scheme. As long as you have a good understanding, don't waste time creating essay questions for your biology exams, especially if you're doing IB or A levels. But for all the subjects where you don't have ready-made mark schemes for those essay questions, you have to put a bit of time, a bit more effort to create digestion digestible, good quality essay plans. Now, so far you've gone through the past paper questions, you've listed them out and you've used the mark scheme as guidance to learn how to structure the essay and what details to include in that essay. Now it's time to use those list of essay questions that you made and create essay plans that are good quality and as easy to digest as possible. The essay plans you create will depend on the subject you're doing, the amount of time you have and the specific question itself. But generally what I did was that I compiled all the relevant information for that essay question into one document. I go on Google and build my essay plans using PDFs, research papers, any good review articles I could find that I know would give my essay original insight and would help support it with strong evidence. And if you can find that, you can just restructure the points in that paper. You can make your own, adapt it to your essay question, and there you go. You have an essay plan all done. After copying and pasting and rephrasing so many bits and pieces from everywhere online, it becomes really easy to synthesize a solid essay plan. 
Adding the extra effort of going online to search up research papers for that specific essay question for your humanities subjects or your English exam gives your essay a higher level of quality and immediately separates you from the person that's just learnt their textbook to make their answers. A quick tip though, trying to include new angles or unique POVs for an essay is always helpful, but you should never do this at the expense of the mark scheme or what the examiner is looking for. If all that essay question wants you to do is to talk about the processes and the arguments already mentioned in your textbook, then forget originality. Just do what the question is asking. After you've made this document of information for that essay question, what I do is that I distill it all down to a few bullet points. Cut everything up, divide it all into subheadings and distinct bullet points so that it's as easy to memorize as possible. I remember trying to memorize huge paragraphs from my essay plans and it was horrible. It took so long and you get obsessed with the specific phrases and if you don't use them right. But if you just distill and categorize all the chunks of information into bullet points and memorize those only, then you life just becomes a lot easier. After making these good quality digestible essay plans that are optimized for you to memorize them quickly, all you now have to do is transfer those essay plans into your brain. The thing that most helps with memorizing these essay plans, surprisingly, is to actually understand what you're talking about. Understand the concepts that you've included, the arguments that you're talking about, and kind of create a story of the processes that you're mentioning. Rote memorizing the essay plans will work for a short period of time, but the fact that you don't understand what you're talking about will limit you to those 10 to 20 essay plans that you've made. And anything else that comes up in the exam, you wouldn't know. But if you actually understand all the points that you've made in all of the essay plans, you'll be able to easily retrieve quality arguments to answer any question that's thrown at you during the exam. And that's a skill that you just won't get if you won't memorize it. Now, after putting all this effort, the way you commit these essay plans to memory really doesn't matter. For me, whenever I'd revise for that essay exam, all I do is that I'd recall and try to remember and practice those bullet points in my essay plan for a specific question. I'd just walk around my room, scribble these bullet points down on a piece of paper and see if I could remember it. If I couldn't, or if I was having a lot of trouble answering these questions, then I'd sit down to create a full-blown spider diagram with all the important points on that one page. However I did it though, my goal was to always recall and practice those essay plans in that two to three hour revision session that I'm doing because I knew that I'm not going to be doing this more than a handful of times for the exams. And after putting in so much effort to actually make these essay plans good quality and digestible, I knew that memorizing them was going to be fully based on the repetitions I put in. It was going to be a quantity game rather than a quality game. For practical subjects and more problem-based exams like chemistry, physics, math, rote memorization just won't help that much. As much as you can do it, and as much as you can memorize definitions and equations and all this sort of stuff, it just won't significantly improve your grades. But what will improve your grades is actually understanding the concepts behind all the problems and questions you get in the exam. And the best and fastest way to not only gain a good understanding, but also test your understanding of the concepts that you have to study is through using a technique called active blurting. This is blurting out all the information, equations, and concepts that you remember for a certain topic onto a blank page without using any resources, all from your memory. It's active recall, but on the next level. Let me explain. What I do is that I list out all the subheadings and the subtopics within that big topic, and then I grab a blank piece of paper and write down every single thing I knew for every single subheading on that page. I try to get as much information as possible from memory onto that page without using any resources. This could include definitions, equations, information, flowchart, whatever you want, but it has to fit on that one page. It didn't need to be pretty. It just needed to test my understanding. By going through all the subtopics, you're essentially ensuring that you have everything that you want to have on that one page. You know what you couldn't remember and you know what you could remember. And after I was done, I'd go back to YouTube, the textbooks, the syllabus, and try to figure out what I didn't know. I'd highlight all the subheadings that I didn't get in red so that I knew that I have to work on them and come back to them at a later point. The key here is to not stress about the irrelevant details. Active learning is just a way to verify your understanding of the entire topic. It shows you what you don't know and what you do know, and it helps you actively recall whatever you learned and hence helps these concepts stick in your head. If I'm being honest, doing this for a topic actually requires a bit of effort. It requires that initial activation energy to get started and make your brain work. But I assure you, if you do it like two to three times for a topic, you'll have that topic completely mapped out in your head and you will deepen your understanding of the concepts within that topic. So that when it comes to applying those topics in the exam, you'll be able to do so with so much more ease. If you'd like to learn about how I efficiently study for exams and how I've used active recall in class and at home, then check this video out.
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe for more content in the future, and as always, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.